Ask not what we are be can do for you. Ask what you can do for we all be. Sister Jack Lee, we ready? I want to ask you, like, how did you meet uh, Larry Lee? Oh my God! Uh, back in seventy-one. Okay. I was in college. Well, I was beginning, you know, college, and um, I met him at the club. Um, What's that club? Peyton Place Club. Okay. He had just got through with Jimmy, and you know, moved back to Memphis, and so I met him at a club. Uh, the Pay Place Club, you know. He didn't know me, I didn't know him, but he knew Calvin Graham, the saxophone player. And Calvin introduced him to me. I was a young girl, you know, we were young, didn't know anything. And he was a little bit older than I was. And that's what I liked about it. So, um, we met at a club. What type of impression did he make on you when you first met him at the club? Well, I saw this big nice looking man you know and i'm not color struck but i just saw this big nice looking man mm -hmm. and he picked up his guitar and he looked over there and winked at me and uh, i said mm, just like that so he started playing i said what kind of music is that and calvin said it's um psychedelic music i said what is that and he was singing the music as he was playing on his guitar you know analyzing himself, you know, as he played guitar, he would, you know, make the same sound with his mouth. So I guess it's like psychedelic music. Okay. And like, when was your first date? Do you recall? Can you recall the first date? I see about, about four months after I met him. The first date was about four months. We went to the Star Review and um, Al was on the, you know, on the Star Review. Al okay. Rain, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. So anyway, um, Larry took me there, and Al was on the stage with these short and long boots. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, how do you like him? I said, he's cool. He, he said, how do you like the way he dressed? I said, well, you know, that's the new thing now. You know, it's like back in the 70s. So he said, I'll be right back. I'm going to talk to him. I think I want to play with him. I said, well, that's cool. Yeah. And so when he came back, and he told me, he said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start playing with him. Do you want to travel with me? I said, no, because I was younger than he was. Mm -hmm. I said, I would have to ask my dad everything that I do. You know, so when he met Larry and saw that Larry was a, you know, well-raised gentleman, he told me it was okay to go, you know, travel with him. And we traveled, had babies, traveled, had babies. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had like y'all in love. Y'all was very much in love. Very much in love. So I'm gonna ask you this: when you first saw him, did you knew that he was gonna be somebody that's gonna be a, play an important part in your life, or you didn't know that until the? I didn't know that. When did you know that he was gonna be that person? Well, downtown Memphis. He took me downtown Memphis to this movie, mm -hmm. and um, when we came out of the movie, it was like about eight o'clock that night, and it was a jewelry store downtown. Mm -hmm. And he said, come on, I'm going to show you some jewelry. I'm going to buy you a ring. I said, okay, good. So I was looking at the ring. He said, pick out the, the ring that you want. I said, oh, that's a pretty diamond. He said, it sure is. 
He said, but I want to marry you. I said, you can't marry me. You know, I'm in school. Uh, you can't marry me right now. So when he said that I'm going to marry you, I thought about it. I said, oh, I like him. You know, and here come the flowers and the roses and the candy and the traveling with Al. I mean, he had threw out the red carpet for me. He really did. And I never met a man like him before, you know, never. So I just mm -hmm. fell in love with him. So what was like his, his greatest trait, you think, his greatest personality trait, in your opinion? Himself. Mm. Himself. His love for family. Love family? Yeah, he, yeah, he loved his family. I mean, not love being selfish. I didn't mean to say it like that. You know, he was a family man, you know. And um, he took care of himself and he took care of his family. But trying to be like somebody else? No, that wasn't him. There's no like a stereotype for musicians of being like reckless or happy-go-lucky and carefree and not responsible. So Larry, he, you know, he defied those stereotypes. Very much so, he did. Yeah, I'm mean, like, he's a friend, he was a good friend with Jimi Hendrix, though. We all, <laughs> you know, like, well, like, like night and day. You know, you know, after he had found out about Jimmy's uh, habits with drugs, which we know that if you read the book, that Jimmy didn't die from a drug overdose. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, you know, just read the book and you'll find out the cause of his death. Um, what book is this that people need to read? The name of that book is Jimmy Henry's Experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. How did he, how did Larry meet Jimmy? I think they met at school, um, this college in Nashville, University of uh, Tennessee. Okay. In Nashville, he met up with him there, and most so uh, Ralph uh, Cox. What's his name? Uh, Cox, the bass player. Billy Cox. Billy Cox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He introduced Larry to Jimmy, but Larry had already known Jimmy before he even, you know, he introduced Larry to Jimmy. Did, did he ever tell you about what he, what he thought about Jimmy? I mean, did he ever share with you some of the, his moments and memories of Jimmy? He shared a lot of moments, because I always would ask questions about Jimmy. What type of person was he? Uh, you know, was he a funny guy? Was he a happy guy? He said Jimmy was a real cool guy. I say if I have ever if I had if I could have met Jimmy, what would he have said to me? He said he would have loved you. Mm -hmm. He said he really would have loved you because you know I'm tall with this afro, mm -hmm. looking like Jimmy, but I'm a woman. <laughs> 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 because I used to wear the, like to wear the blue jeans and the big you know tops back in the days and mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, it was fun. It was fun. Uh, he shared a lot of memories, but but I can't. Can't really remember because after Larry left Jimmy, mm -hmm. he went ahead and started working with Al Green. So I can't really, really remember everything that he told me. But he showed—I mean, he just told me about a lot of things did, about it. Did he talk about his experience at Woodstock, one of the biggest uh, biggest concerts in history he, of the world? <laughs> he couldn't stand it place. He couldn't stand it. He didn't oh. like it. Okay. He said of people's, you know, I'm not talking about people's, but back then, you know, mm -hmm. the flower power stuff going right. on. He said it's just the way they was out there naked, and <laughs> it was nasty, mm -hmm. and it was just filthy. Was he good. didn't, he didn't like it. Yes, he did. He told me that. So he was more so like a, even though he was a musician. Okay, okay, he's a child. Okay, okay. Yeah, even though he was a musician, he was more of a normal down to earth guy. He, he didn't like, a he didn't like what guy. He was a lover of animals, children, take the kids places. He loved people. He loved traveling and stuff, but his main thing was the love of family and making so, yeah. sure his family was okay. Even the kids, the kittens, the puppy dogs. He was just a. Interesting. He, he wasn't. You're a normal musician. I see. You know, <laughs> he, he, he did work on the road, I'm sure. And was I was living in New York at the time, and mm -hmm. I uh, came. I wasn't sitting far from the. Uh, they was at Euro's Theater. I wasn't sitting far from the front of the stage. I was probably about on the fifth row, mm -hmm. and I walked up to the stage, and Jimmy and um, Daryl came and pulled me up on the stage, and they also I said we got some Memphis people here. Uh huh. But he was so concerned about you want to go home, you want to go home. But he he was. 
he was a he was a great great musician, great musician. But the most important thing to Larry Lee was family. Oh, wow. Was family. He couldn't wait to get home and sit that guitar right there where that mirror is mm -hmm. and come in here where his family was mm -hmm. and to brag about. Well, he was one of the greatest talking about. He, he, he hated my cook. He well, hated yeah, my cook. <laughs> he hated my cook. He always said, baby, cooking. that's some good food. Uh -huh. He and loved her cooking. He thought she cooked. <laughs> no, he hated well, the he cooking. Like, I heard him when he said it. <laughs> he just ate it anyway, huh? That's the worst cook in the world. He thought the world of his wife. Uh -huh. yeah, he I thought understand. the world of his wife and his family. He thought, you know, he thought the world of her. He wow, it's really refreshing to hear that, actually. He, I'm really... he, he was a musician and he traveled mm. the roads and went some of But what I'm, I'm not cutting you out saying, but what I'm saying, he was asking about how did Larry, did he like Woodstock? And I was just letting him know when he got off the helicopter and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he said all these people down there, they was naked mm -hmm. and didn't have on clothes. And they were just, look, they had been out there like three or four days. Who want to be in mud three or four days? You know, he mm -hmm. didn't like that part, but he enjoyed the idea of being on stage with Jamie. Right. He actually performed what several songs, Gypsy Woman, Mastermind. And, yes. Uh, he did a Nat, a Nat King Cole song and uh, two more other, I think a BB King song. Okay. And something else that he did, but they cut that out. They didn't. They didn't play that. Why did Why they cut it out? I don't know. And I'm I've been trying to find out why did they do that? Because I want the the raw version, but mm -hmm. they didn't cut it out. I mm -hmm. would like to hear him. Mm -hmm. You know, on the stage, but they cut him out, and they just start with Jimmy. But he just came from Vietnam before he went to Woodstock, right? He was just coming yeah. out of Vietnam. Yeah, just got back. From and he had got a metal plate from uh, in his head from that. No, what it was, it was a grenade. He was over like fifteen guys, mm -hmm. and to save their life, he was telling them, "Get down, you know, get down, get down." And by that time, he got down. The thing exploded. And hit him in his head. Wow. And uh, they rushed him, you know, the helicopter came and rushed him to the hospital. So they took him off the, uh, the, you know, duty where he was out there fighting and put him in a little city. Mm -hmm. And the little kids would come around and play with him. Oh, he was crazy about children, you know. Over there. He cared a whole lot about those peoples over there, you know, even... Even though it was a war. Was he conflicted about being on there then? I mean, did he agree with the war? Was he drafted? He was drafted. So, so okay. I mean, yeah, Muhammad Ali at the time, conscious is objective. You know, the, I mean, it's like, he's a family guy. So I can see how Woodstock would be kind of hedonistic to him. I mean, he come out of a church background. Or mm -hmm. uh, very, you know, grounded. You know, very, I mean, I, would, I don't like to call it conservative. But this is very, uh, I guess, this normal family thing. And to see people acting kind of hedonistic and, you know, that would be kind of like a culture shock to anybody, I guess, that's not used to it. But, like, what I'm actually is, like, how did he hook up with Al Green? How did that happen? Um, back in the 70s. In the 70s. Well, he was with, he was trying to get with Al. I think he said it was, like, 68. And, um, he, you know, I think he uh, left service and got back, like, in 69 from the uh, Vietnam War. And went with Jimmy. And then when he came back uh, from Jimmy, you know, he went to the Woodstock thing and Jimmy wanted him to play with him. And they went to this place that was in uh, New York. Mm -hmm. And the, he said it was a big old hotel room and everybody was just hundreds of people sitting up in that little room. Wow. And they was all just like high, you know. And Jimmy just walking around just smiling. Larry, Larry, Larry <laughs> told him, I need to talk to you, Jimmy. And, um, so Jimmy um, was kind of floating in mm -hmm. the head, you know, mm -hmm. for us, what they get high off of, I didn't know, I was too young. But anyway, um, Larry came back the next day to let him know that he wasn't going to travel or play with him anymore, that he had found somebody else that he'd rather be with. Wow. Because he didn't like the crowd that Jimmy was around. I mean, they just kept him drugged or whatever, you know. I mean, it's kind of like, it's eerie to think about what you talk about, because I think about Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And all the revelations coming out now about yeah. it. And it's like the way they control artists to keep them drugged up, to control right. their careers. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the powers that be that run that industry. It's a bit, yeah. Music industry is very interesting. I know you got some stories about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, but I know, my understanding, did he actually give Jimi Hendrix his coat, his winter coat to take with him to New York one time? And Jimmy was homeless for six weeks. The only thing he had was that winter coat. Larry never mentioned that. Okay. I don't, right. I, mm -hmm. I, if he did, it probably was personal to him and just really didn't want to say that. Mm -hmm. But but he never did mention that to me. I know Jimmy gave him a lot of them little, what is those little jackets with the shingles? Uh -huh. He gave him three of those. Did he keep? He ever keep all that? Did he keep that clothes that Jimmy gave him? Yeah, yeah. They are in the mu uh, museums. Okay. Like now, I, how, what was his response? You, did he ever tell you where he was at when you heard the news that Jimmy passed away? Or what his response was? Jimmy, uh, Larry was at home when he heard that. He had just left that place mm -hmm. to let Jimmy know that he wasn't going to work with him anymore. And uh, about, um, i say about three, four days later, he found that Jimmy had died. Wow. Yeah. So he just had an intuition that he do the things that are going to turn out too well. He had a feeling, it was it was so many people, and it was like two people that always would follow Jimmy, and Larry didn't like that feeling. He mm -hmm. didn't like that feeling. He said it was gypsies. Mm. And he was trying to pull uh, Jimmy out of that stuff, but Jimmy just, you know, they kept pulling him in. Mm. They didn't like Larry, because Larry was trying to save his life. Right. He saw that, he saw what was happening. Mm -hmm. You know, anytime somebody uh, want to destroy their life every day, like getting high for drugs and uh -huh. stuff, and if you got somebody that's close and they love you and they're going to try to take you away from that, mm -hmm. and these people's pulling them back in, so I guess you must enjoy what they was doing. It's like, you, you talk about people, when I read about, I'm reading, I'm reading books about Charlie Parker and Miles Davis. People talk about an addict. The addict doesn't have a personality. I mean, they, but it's like Jimmy had a lot of personality still left in him. Jimmy was a beautiful person, Larry mm -hmm. said. Even he when was, he was using drugs? Even when he was using drugs. Mm -hmm. But he didn't like seeing him, you know, like that. Because he cared about it. That makes sense. Yeah, you know? he did. He really he said, didn't like it. He said something. He told me once that something happened in that ambulance. See, That's where the they door. they laid him back he in the ambulance instead of sitting him up. You know when you see, aspirate, vomit, right? And um, they had been drinking a lot of wine and stuff, and they instead mm -hmm. of them sitting him up mm -hmm. to keep the fluid, you know, from going right. into his lungs, mm -hmm. they laid him back. And so therefore, he aspirated, and it was. Yeah, it's the only thing he don't think it was a murder, though. I mean, he think he was murdered. I mean, I be here like his manager. Is it okay for me to say? Yeah, I mean, you can say what uh, that that uh, my husband thought the FBI had something to do with it because uh, mm -hmm. because uh, he said that uh, Jimmy had did something for the Black Panthers mm. and they didn't like that, and so they thought Jimmy was like anti-American. He was in the army, right? He was 101st Airborne, right? Yeah, Screaming he was Eagles. in the army. He was very, um, mm -hmm. what you call that word? Patriotic or? Patriotic. That Star Spangled that, Banner he did yeah, with class, like Whitney yeah, Houston's uh, he, National Anthem. He was very mm -hmm. patriotic, and mm -hmm. they didn't think that way, you know, and they just started sending gypsies to him, gypsies, gypsies, get him high, get him high. Interesting. That's what Larry said. I also heard his manager was in British intelligence or something like that. He was an intelligence officer. He worked with Brit British intelligence, his manager. I think so. It's a little, um, yeah, Caucasian guy. Yeah, I think so. I mean, so I mean, people like it's funny how they they tell us a story. Cause I know I read stuff about Tupac and Biggie when they got killed. You had FBI on the scene. Mm -hmm. Or you talk to civil rights activists. You had FBI present when civil rights activists were getting beat up and stuff like that. Yeah. Even had some FBI in the Klan committing crimes themselves. Right. So right. why do people? Why do you think people have a hard time believing that Jimmy was murdered instead of just dying of drug overdose? Why do people think that Jim was murdered? Because the, um, if they read if they read the book, they would understand what happened. Mm. If they get the book and read it, you know, because I don't want to be out there. He say, she say. Exactly. Know. know for yourself. And, yeah, read mm -hmm. the book and then find out for yourself. I don't think. I'm not gonna say because I don't know whether or not he was murdered. Or what all I know, my husband went to talk to him about that he wasn't going to work with him and mm -hmm. uh, and that was about it. A couple of days later he was gone. Mm, wow. I mean they had a document on the red, on the TV and they said, well this guy, I can't remember his name, but he was a Caucasian guy 
and they said that Jimmy, uh, you know, they, you know, a little funnel party, but they put mm-hmm. a little tube down your throat mm-hmm. and they pour the wine down in there. Mm-hmm. They said they had a party like that, and um, that's just the way they did. Oh wow! In the book it tells you that that um, the book that's in the library it, it mostly tells you that about Jimi Hendrix. He was the type of person like all of us sitting here, mm-hmm. and one person is a user and like the party, and the other person go along with him. Jimmy was like the a person that um, try this man, try this. Okay. He'll try right. stuff. He, he wasn't like... So he was about the experience. Yeah. <laughs> he was... <laughs> he was that, that, right. He was to that point uh-huh. that he, you know, whatever somebody wanted him to do, you know, it was like to fit in or something like that. He would try stuff. You know, mm. he, he, it wasn't like he was a user like I imagine if he came to you and say, you keep trying it, you keep trying it. But I read most of that book. Mm-hmm. It's a really thick book and it takes a long time to read it. I really wish Larry was here for his interview. Mm-hmm. He could, you know, really, you know, give the insights. He was, Larry. Jimmy, Jimmy was had a private life. Larry said yeah. that he had a very private life too. It's just the idea when the gypsies came around and they just took him away from him. You know, were they real gypsies? Were they intelligence agents? I mean, I mean, I was saying, were they agents? They could have been. A, I don't mm-hmm. know. But to, uh, from my understanding, it was one girl that would stay with him all the time. Mm-hmm. And the night or day, I don't, I can't remember. Uh, that he, I think it was a night. Yeah, it was kind of like early in the morning when he died, mm-hmm. and they was looking for this girl, but they never could find her. When Jimmy uh, died, that's when she left. Did Larry feel threatened by these people? Did they try to threaten Larry while he was around Jimmy because they saw he was a common influence? Or? No, because Larry wasn't gonna have it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't gonna have it. He didn't let him know. Uh huh. I mean, you know, he just got out the Vietnam Vietnam War and. Like a little hero coming home, 